Would now like to have conference over to Mr. Anup Pachari from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Rosari Biotech Limited's Q2 and H1 FID1 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Edward Menzel, Promoter and Executive Chairman, Mr. Sunil Chari, Promoter and Managing Director, and Ms. Manasi Nisal, Chief Financial Officer of the company. We will begin the call with opening remarks from the management, in which we have the open for a question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Edward G to make his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our Q2 and H1 FY21 earnings call to discuss the operating and financial performance for the quarter. I trust that you and your families are safe and maintaining all precautions against the spread of COVID-19. I hope you all had an opportunity to go through our results presentation, which provides details of our operational and financial performance for the second quarter and half year ended 30th September 2020. To begin with, I am pleased to share that we have delivered a robust performance during the quarter driven by improved demand and traction across our businesses. Our HPPC business continued to record healthy growth as we were one of the early movers to tap upon the growing national demand for hygiene products and antiviral portfolio sales back in March. This was made possible by our fungible and agile manufacturing facilities that enabled us to swiftly address large volume requirements for these product categories. The demand momentum for this segment continued in the second quarter as well, which in turn enabled us to record strong improvement in HPPC sales. In addition, as the country moved to the unlock phase towards the end of May, we also saw an encouraging pickup in demand for our TSC and animal health businesses. With the help of our fungible manufacturing cap uh, capacities, we were able to gain even, we were able to again even out manufacturing processes to cater to this uptick in consumption. So on the whole, all three businesses reported improved performance during the second quarter, and we are further encouraged that our revenue growth momentum is now at pre-COVID levels. As one of the key highlights for the quarter, I am happy to share with you that our new state-of-the-art certified R&D laboratory, Rosari Center of Excellence, is now fully operational. The lab is strategically located on the IIT campus in Mumbai and is one of the key cornerstones or uh, strengths of our business model. This facility, alongside our existing R&D arm at Silvasa, will enable us to keep pace with the upcoming opportunities in the market and will help develop and seed new offerings in our product portfolio. During the quarter, we had also further broadened our product offerings within the high growth categories of hygiene, laundry, and fabric care segments. These innovative and niche offerings are seeing great acceptance among existing and new customers. On the whole, we are seeing increased demand across our businesses, and we are confident that the momentum will continue to grow in the months ahead. Several micro and macro level economic indicators are pointing towards a medium to long term broad based recovery. The upcoming festive season should also lead to enhanced consumer sentiments. On the whole, we are confident of our future growth potential and opportunities across the domestic market over the medium to longer term. With a healthy balance sheet and adequate manufacturing capacity, we believe we are well poised to capitalize on the market opportunities and deliver a sustainable and healthy growth trajectory going forward. With this, I would like to conclude my address 
and i now hand over to mr sunil chari for his comments thank you edward ji good evening and warm namaste to everyone following an unprecedented last quarter the operating environment during this quarter was relatively steady demand and sales especially for our tsc and hn businesses marked a significant rebound on a sequential basis our hppc business as edward ji indicated continued to record a healthy performance during the quarter overall we saw improved traction in volume of take and reported growth in line with what we were witnessing for our tsc and ahn products prior to the lockdown the quarter also witnessed sustained traction in client engagements especially from the fmcg and textile businesses from an operational standpoint as discussed in the previous call we have successfully commissioned the first phase of our greenfield manufacturing facility at the hage in gujarat full operationalization of the facility is also progressing as per schedule and we remain on track to commission the plan by march 2021 the facility will have an installed capacity of 132500 metric tons per annum and will help deliver a strong impetus to our overall volumes and production levels going ahead our manufacturing facility at silvasa is also now operating at near normal pre covid utilization levels in sync with improving demand across businesses we have steadily increased production levels at this facility the senior management team and key roles to strengthen the foundation of our company i am happy to share that the board has appointed mr manikantan vishwanathan as a group cfo of the company he has assumed the position with effect from today october 26th mr vishwanathan brings with him over 30 years of proven track record at various managerial and leadership roles in large and renowned public listed companies including galaxy surfactants godrej group grand industries and reliance communication with his last position as director and cfo in this newly appointed role he will be driving finance and strategic initiatives of the company we are confident that he will add tremendous value to our company and i welcome him to the rodari family to conclude we have delivered a steady and encouraging performance during the first half of the fiscal our customer engagements continue to be solid and we are steadily building our presence in the domestic market accordingly we are constantly seeding new innovative and high potential product offerings across fpc tsc and ahn businesses all these three businesses are strong growth drivers for us and the outlook for each business remains strong in the medium to long term on that i would now request our cfo ms mansi insal to share perspectives on the financial performance of the quarter thank you chari sir good evening everyone let me provide you a brief overview of the financial performance for the quarter during the quarter we have delivered healthy performance driven by improved demand and traction across businesses in the key end user industries of hppc textile and ahn leading to a healthy performance in quarter 2 fy 2021 on a consolidated basis revenue comes in at 171.7 crore as against 150.3 crore in q2 fy 20 Revenues from HPPC stood at 87.7 crore, contributing to 51.1 percent of revenues. Followed by TSC business at 68.3 crore, contributing to 39.8 percent, and AHN at 15.6 crore, contributing to 9.1 percent to total revenues. On the profitability front, EBITDA stood at 30.1 crore as against 28.3 crore in quarter two FY20. As we had earlier anticipated, gross and EBITDA margins normalized in quarter two FY21 as compared to Q1 FY21 and stood healthy at 37.1% and 17.5% respectively. Depreciation was higher at 5.6 crore owing to part capitalization of the H facility. As the company further capitalizes this greenfield unit, the depreciation charge should increase in the coming quarters. Additional charge. be absorbed efficiently as the new facility starts contributing to performance going forward interest cost during the quarter stood at 0.7 crore pat during the quarter stood at 20.7 crore as against 17.7 crore in fy in q2 fy20 i would like to highlight here 
that Q2 FY21 PAC figure includes a gain of 2.3 crore on account of fair valuation of previously held equity interest in a joint venture in accordance with applicable accounting standards. Excluding this figure, the normalized PAC should stood at 18.4 crore in Q2 FY21. From a balance sheet perspective, our net cash position was 102.3 crore as on September 30, 2020. The company utilized the IPO proceeds towards funding its working capital requirements, prepayment of loans and general corporate purposes. On the working capital front, our inventory days increased primarily on account of commencement of dedic facility. We expect this to normalize going forward. Cash flows from operating activities during the half year ended 30th September stood at 20.9 crore. On the whole, the company's financial performance is very strong. Over the long term, we will pursue all our defined strategic, initi uh, strategic initiatives while always maintaining financial discipline. On that note, I come to the end of our opening remarks and would request the moderator to open the forum for any operational and strategic-led questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question-answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Take the first question from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Suniri Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a uh, great set of numbers on sequential leases as well as the viral details. Uh, so the first question is on the uh, PSC uh, segment. So we have seen a marked improvement on our sequential basis as well as uh, on a bio basis, uh, we have remained almost flattish. So what is the current trend uh, that we are experiencing, uh, whether the demand has been normalized uh, in the segment and uh, in Q3, do we expect uh, further improvement? Thank you. Uh, Namaste, Rohit uh, With regard to the textile businesses, uh, you know, uh, the pipeline in the textile industry was depleted with respect to supplies to the distributor and the customer, and uh, we saw healthy demand in the last quarter. Uh, exporters, especially the terry towel exporters and even denim exporters are doing very well. The bedsheeting exporters are doing very well. And the garment also exports look very robust. Uh, all of our top customers have full orders, you know, uh, till December. Uh, in the, the online retail, uh, the business is very good, you know, what we hear from the customers. Uh, as we start uh, the business, uh, if we supply a chemical to a fabric processor, by the time it comes to the shelf, it takes one and a half, two months. So it means you know the lead time for for our FG to reach the shops is one and a half two months. Uh, so we uh, the custom the, our uh, customers in the textile industry are you know bullish on the prospects in the coming months. Uh, but we we expect uh, this good trend to continue. Okay, uh, thanks. Also, second question is in terms of the other expenditure. So on a wider basis, uh, the other operating expenses have come down by about eight percent. And uh, given that our operation yeah. size and uh, uh, Mr. Roy, sorry, we are unable to hear you properly. Your voice is cracking or not very clear. Uh, can you just speak sorry, up, uh, please? Is it, is it clear? Is it better? Ah, now it's clear. Better, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so on a wire basis, uh, the other operating expenses have uh, come up by about eight percent. And uh, given that uh, our supply has actually increased, so is there any element of uh, uh, permanent cost reduction uh, due to so COVID regions uh, that we are experiencing and uh, that particular cost reduction will go on uh, henceforth. Thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, um, the expenses have gone down because of uh, this pandemic. Uh, the operational, exp I mean, the administrative nature expenses have gone down, and. Uh, uh, and traveling, I mean, mainly traveling expenses, office expenses, all these expenses have gone down. That is why there is a reduction in the uh, on a YOY level. And uh, like in the last year, H1, we had a um, lot of seminars, conferences, so those expenses were also there, so which are not there in the current H1. That is why there is a reduction in the expenses. 
So, uh, is there a part of this expenditure uh, permanent in nature that uh, it will continue in subsequent quarters as well? Or uh, will it come back when the normal state returns to the business? It will get normalized. Like uh, when the situation starts getting normalizing, these expenses also will get normalized. Okay, and this is uh, one last clarification on the AHM side also. On a sequential basis, there is been no stock improvement. So, will this particular growth momentum continue for the rest of the year? Thank you. Uh, AHM, uh, Rohitji, the market uh, has been very robust in the last quarter. Uh, July to September, uh, our customers in the poultry sector got the highest realization for eggs and chickens. And uh, so, we, you know, our collection is robust and our sales are robust. Uh, and we see good trend uh, in this sector in the year, in the times to come. Thank you, Mr. Luxa. Thank you. A reminder to the participants if you want to ask a question, please press star then one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Sanjeev Jain from ICCI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks good for the opportunity. A couple of questions from my side. Uh, first on the TS, uh, the textile chemical side, THC, uh, what was the March? Uh, so for the quarter as a whole, uh, it's almost flattish, a small decline. But if I compare uh, September to September, so exit run rate where we are, and uh, do you expect that run rate to continue? That's one. Uh, uh, on the other side, if you look at what the, uh, the retailers are selling, as in uh, the at least uh, offline retailers, uh, they haven't shown the kind of buoyancy which, uh, as a textile uh, chemical company, the numbers we are suggesting that that suggests that we are gaining market share. If that's the case, uh, uh, on the textile chemical side. Uh, so these are the two two questions from my side on the textile chemical. I have more on the HPPC. I will come back on that. Sanjeeji, good evening. Uh, Sanjeeji, uh, September to September, last year we were 125 crores approximately and this year we are 85 crores. Uh, quarter and quarter, in the second quarter of last year we were 70.9 crores and uh, we are at 68.3 crores. So we are practically near to, you know, the, you know QOQ, YOY, uh, if you can see. Uh, the customers, you know, we have is mostly exporters and uh, this includes Wellspun, Trident, Shahi, uh, Arvind and all th these have good export orders. Uh, the processors in you know cities like Surat, in cities like Ludhiana, in Tirupur, again Tirupur is also doing a lot of garment exports. Uh, order position is very very good. So the last quarter we saw very robust uh, demand and uh, continuing this uh, you know uh, this looks like a uh, normalizing of the textile business for us. Got it. Got it. We are telling that the export buoyancy is more helping us than the domestic retail sale in the apparel. Uh, and so Sanjay, the as, I, as, as I said earlier, the pipeline for us is nearly two months. So hum chemical, when we supply the chemical to a processor, it will be made from garment, hoga, garment se wholesaler will go to wholesaler, se retailer will go to retailer, so it will take time for one or two months. So the pipeline is completely empty. So when, because the pipeline is, is empty now, uh, it is being filled at both the our distributors end and at the customers end. So what we are telling is it also has a benefit of channel inventory filling. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, Sanjeeji, can you repeat the question, please? So we are telling that in textile chemical of performance of this quarter, we also have some benefit of channel inventory filling. Yes. And also festivals. And the festival season is already all, also, you know, around the corner. No, no, that's why you are in the base, mein bhi tha, right? Right, right, right. So that's, that's, so that's helpful. But do you think your market share has gone up? Because it's a fantastic number on a chemical. I think I think your market share should have gone up, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, doing an IPO helps us uh, gain more visibility in the customers and more confidence, uh, you know, at the customer level. And uh, I think we have, you know, got higher market share. Got it, got it. Thanks. Uh, Few questions on the HPPC category. Uh, the the continuation of solid growth, and I think we were run out of the capacity at Silvasa. That means the new facility which we started in July have also started to contribute in the HPPC category revenue this quarter. And you see, at the uh, at the Dahej facility, only some part of the production has been shifted over there, and therefore. Uh, 
there is no big uh, change uh, in the production at uh, Silvasa. The Silvasa remains uh, normal, but there is declogging happening now. And slowly, I think that declogging will happen uh, better in the coming months once the uh, 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 facility at the edge is completely up and running. At the present moment, we are doing about uh, uh, 2,000 uh, tons plus at the edge per month. And uh, okay. I think that will then grow. As like we said, that 25 to 30,000 tons we will do this year. And that's what uh, we are targeting by March 21. So we are on course for that, right? Yes, yes. We are on course to uh, actually put, uh, commission the facility by March uh, 2021. And the first phase we have started, the operation has been smooth and the, uh, the production has been there, right? As we said, the 2,000 metric ton. Is yes. From the, so, so that is from the new facility we are talking, right? Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, thank you, sir. There were a few questions and uh, congrats on a very good set of number and uh, best wishes for the future quarter. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay ji. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants again, if you have a question, please press star, then one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Jason Soons from Monarch Network. Please go ahead. Um, so thanks for taking my question. Um, I, I have a very simple question, actually. You know, uh, you have your three cylinders, which is the HQPC segment, TAC segment, and the AHN segment. All of them have done pretty uh, pretty well, and uh, you know, I think it's adequately captured in the stock price as well. So just wanted to know, you know, from a future perspective, I mean, COVID hygiene products, disinfectants, antiviral, etc., is well discounted in the growth. Uh, in the price and in, in growth for the near term and the medium term as well. So just wanted to know from the future perspective, what more products or, uh, you know, we can see from Rosary in the future, which can fuel future growth. So, uh, so Mr. Jason, yeah, yeah uh, Mr. Jason, uh, since the, the H facility is, uh, uh, is now going to be commissioned at, uh, uh the age by March 21, uh, in the HCPC segment, other than hygiene products, laundry products, and uh, sanitization products, we have other segments uh, that we are that we were catering to, like like the paint industry, like the paper industry, like the water treatment chemicals, etc. So since this capacity will come up, then uh, we will uh, push very aggressively uh, for products uh, for sale of products in these uh, segments too. And that's what will come up uh, new at uh, the age and uh, will take us towards the growth trajectory uh, in the coming years. Okay, so what uh, you said, uh, paint, paint sector and uh, water chemicals paint, as well. Paper, water treatment. Uh, these are the three segments that we will target initially. And then there are other segments in the HPPC which we call as performance chemicals, you know. It is mm -hmm. uh, in the performance chemical segment, we have uh, a number of industries that we have lined up. Out of that, these three industries, we will go aggressively in the first year, and then as the business picks up, uh, we've already seeded uh, other industries like the ceramic and tile, the cement industry, etc. The uh, coatings and ink industries also have been seeded, but mm -hmm. that will come uh, one after the other. Okay, sure. Thanks. That's all, that's all from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swarnam Mukherjee from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are. Yeah, yeah. Namaste, Chari ji. Namaste, Nenzi ji. Uh, Namaste, so, I, uh, con congrats for a good set of numbers, sir. Uh, so, I have two, three questions. Uh, the first one is on the product mix. So, uh, uh, basically, because of the, you know, higher sales of uh, textile and uh, animal health and nutrition, the product mix has now changed more towards them. So I just wanted to know uh, your thoughts on how do you see this product mix panning out over the next couple of quarters uh, and for the full year, because uh, this also kind of helps us understand how the margins would be, uh, like you had guided uh, during uh, earlier meetings about you know the gross margin profiles of each of those business. Uh, so this is the first question. Uh, the second one is, uh, sir, if if you could share any update that you might have on uh, the personal care uh, subsidiary, uh, what is the status on that? Uh, how are things progressing? And the third one is, sir, uh, uh, you had also mentioned during the IPO time that uh, 
uh, you had plans to move into uh, dairies and brewery segments as well as uh, also certain products for the construction sector uh, water treatment chemicals i think which has also been seeded so uh, any uh, any updates on that on how those are panning out and uh, how that might you know eventually uh, uh, have a bearing on the product mix going forwards thank you uh, so that the for uh, the break up of the division the hpc division has the biggest mark, you know market potential for our products uh, so we feel the hpc always would be the leading you know business in our you know uh, bouquet of uh, offerings Uh, so this year also we we feel it will be you know more than half of our business would be HPC. Uh, the textile and EHN have done well in this quarter and uh, they will continue to do well because these are you know all strong product uh, offerings from us and we have good acceptance in the market. Um, these are our core businesses. And uh, for uh, you know regarding the personal care, we have added very very good customers uh, in this quarter also. and uh, uh, the businesses keep keep uh, growing well and uh, we also have added walmart as a as a customer uh, in the last quarter where we have launched the hand wash uh, um, so we we have a good uh, set of customers which is growing very well and uh, purple nine faces canada and first cry these are you know our, our good customers other than uh, godrej etc which you mentioned in the past Uh, in terms of the new businesses, because of lockdown, we are not focused too much on the new businesses, and and the dairy facility will take time to come 100% uh, to the capacity. Um, but you know, our focus continues to be for seeding into water treatment chemicals, for products into paint, ceramic, uh, paper. Uh, these are areas which which are which which are you know which will go for us. okay okay sir uh, that's helpful so one uh, last follow up from my side i think uh, in last quarter you had mentioned that there was a good contribution from the sanitizer segment uh, due, due, during you know the initial days of the pandemic so just wanted to know i mean uh, do you expect that sales to normalize and any kind of quantification that might have on the hppc segment uh, if uh, the sanitizer sales normalizes so now we now uh, our we were lucky the first quarter we had fantastic sales of sanitizer and disinfectant now this tapering down so as you see you know in your society in offices the usage for sanitizer is going down as and this is we have predicted in the first quarter itself uh, but the other business other products you know in the hpc segment uh, have continued to grow very well and uh, this you know shows that even uh, quarter on quarter our hpc business has grown If you see the first quarter, uh, second quarter of FY20, we were at 66.7 crores, and we are at 87.7 crores in this second quarter of FY21. So we have a substantial, uh, you know, amount of growth, uh, 31% growth quarter on quarter, year on year, uh, you know, in the second quarter. Uh, uh, right, sir. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to also understand was that uh, with the current capacity, so phase one of the age do we have further growth room uh, for uh, our hppc or do, do we have to wait for uh, the you know full the age capacity to come up for uh, you know uh, clocking similar levels of growth the hppc business is also you know uh, contributed from the silvasa side uh, so we have definitely you know had room for growth uh, to cater to higher demand okay that's very helpful sir that's all from my side thank you so much Thank you, Panabji. Thank you. Reminder to the participants: If you wish to ask a question, please press star then one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Mota from Principal India. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening to you, sir. <clears throat> uh, sir, my uh, first question is on uh, uh, capacity expansion at Silvasa. So we were planning to add another twenty thousand uh, to that unit. So uh, that um, additional capacity does come. Uh, yes, uh, Siddharthji. Uh, very good evening. Uh, it does come, sir. Acha. Uh, sir, any? Uh, it does come in the month of October, sir. September, October. Any? Pehle, 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 aage sir, sabo. Okay. So that is in quarter four, sir. March something. Would it be possible for you to tell me? First quarter. अच्छा फर्स्ट क्वार्टर इट कम एंड द कैपेसिटी ऑफ 20000 हां जी सर 20000 कैपेसिटी इज कम अप ओके 
Okay, okay. Uh, uh, and sir, second, in case of the haze, sir, you have clearly mentioned that uh, the phase one capacity it has come. So if you can just quantify what that capacity is and uh, uh, the next capacity, which is phase two, when it is going to come, and eventually when we are going to see uh, one thirty two thousand uh, capacity at the haze. So if you can just help the phase wise and the quarter or the month wise, whatever is possible. So, Siddharth ji, as I already mentioned, that uh, the capacity that there we have built is 2,000 plus tons per month. Uh, approximately 25,000 tons is what we are targeting, and uh, uh, the next phase uh, will uh, will be complete capacity. That is uh, by March 21, uh, 2021, we'll be able to uh, bring up the entire capacity at uh, the age. That is the plan that we have in place. Correct, sir. Uh, sir, you have clearly mentioned in case of the H for FI21, we are targeting 25,000 to 30,000. So, yeah. uh, any similar plans that we might be having uh, for FI22 and 23, what type of visibility that we have? So we, we had already said that we want to fill this capacity in three or four, uh, four years. So, that is the plan. So, uh, uh, the seeded businesses that we have, uh, that the businesses that we have seeded, uh, we will go aggressively after those businesses and we are very confident that in the next three to four years, we will be able to uh, fill up that capacity. Okay, so which is like S524-25 type uh, uh, yes. for the HSLD. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, Satan, and best wishes for upcoming quarters, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manoj Garg from Vito Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, very good, uh, good evening, Mr. Edward and Mr. Chari. Uh, uh, and thank you very much for uh, uh, you know uh, answering my question. Uh, so just uh, would like to understand on the personal care side, the new subsidy which we formed, uh, you know, this quarter. Uh, uh, you know, if you can just highlight in terms of our plan going forward and what kind of uh, portfolio we are looking uh, uh, out of this division first. Uh, Namaste, Manojji. Uh, 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 can you please come up with the question again, uh, Manojji? Yeah, sure, sir. So uh, we have, uh, you know, obviously formed one subsidiary uh, into the personal care. Yes, sir. Uh, bringing Mr. Rupesh Agarwal on the board. So just would like to understand uh, your plan over time. Uh, and if you can, you know, give some highlights in terms of what kind of portfolio we are looking into that division. And, uh, you know, uh, with regard to, like, uh, in terms of plant capacity, et cetera, you know, uh, if you can provide some color on that side, sir. Uh, the initial focus, because of the pandemic, was on cleaning and hygiene. And, uh, you know, health and hygiene has been a focus and driving area for us. Uh, the sanitizer and hand wash, uh, you know, are the top products for the first half of this year. Uh, going forward, we will venture into essential oils, serums, and a lot of other personal care body products, uh, body and hair care uh, uh, products as well. A lot of other other products uh, which we uh, plan to launch uh, in the in the coming times. And sir, like uh, for that, uh, whether the new plant which we put up in the Hays, uh, will that capacity would be used, or we will have maybe a separate manufacturing line for this facility? Uh, it is uh, b b the uh, personal care facility will be at Silvasa. Uh, for the formulation, the ingredients will happen at uh, the H. But at this moment, we are focused on formulation first in the personal care area. Okay. And we already have an existing facility for formulation. Uh, yes, it is, it, is, it is set up at uh, Silvata now. Okay. Okay. Fair enough, sir. And the second things are like, uh, obviously, we were working for, uh, you know, uh, some of the products on the detergent side. Uh, or home and personal care site for a uh, you know very very large uh, FMCG company, and I think last time when we spoke there was some products on the trial stage. Any progress uh, on that account until now? Uh, they are still on the R and D table, uh, you know, and we hope uh, uh, you know hope hope to do it uh, because of COVID the labs are not working fully. So because of the COVID situation, actually uh, they are not encouraging us, uh, not allowing us to meet each other. You know that is uh, that is an issue. Whereas in some of these uh, big FMCG companies, our products have been approved at the lab stage, but the next stage is the semi-bulk or as you call the bulk samples. The bulk sampling is not yet happening because uh, these uh, FMCG companies are very strict uh, in the meeting norms. So we are not unable to meet right. uh, any of these companies. So as soon as the complete unlockdown happens, I think then we will start uh, moving in this direction. 
sure sure that's all for my side sir and wish you all the best thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of nausha chaudhary from systematic shares please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the opportunity um uh, so just uh, wanted to understand we were you know planning to uh, buy the full stake in our bozil uh, jv so uh, what is the status now sir so we have already purchased the 40% shares of uh, bozil uh, in in the last in the last quarter we have completed this transaction ah uh, okay and uh, last one on the export side sir uh, i understand we have uh, only around uh, 10 to 11% of uh, our contribution from export just wanted to understand uh, uh, is this share has gone up in uh, uh, in last quarter and uh, how are you experiencing uh, in your export export business uh, the uh, the second quarter of this year and compared to the second of quarter of last year uh, we have been nearly you know same in terms of export so export has picked up compared to the first quarter of the last year but it is nearly same as uh, the second quarter of the last year okay sir and that's it thank you so much thank you doctor bhai thank you a reminder to the participants if you wish to ask a question please press star then one on your touchstone telephone The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Sanidhi Securities. Please go ahead. So, thank you for the follow-up. Uh, so, in our uh, press release, we mentioned about uh, the Bhuvan Bazari that uh, we have uh, now made it a hundred percent subsidiary. So, what are the plans now, and what was the uh, rationale on this? So, with the uh, save the license fees, uh, we have the brand uh, to market in India. So how the things are going to change after it becomes a hundred percent subsidiary? Thank you. So what has happened, uh, 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 Roji? That because of Corona uh, in Europe, it has taken a big toll on their business basically. And Brazil uh, uh, internally, uh, they were reorganizing and uh, trying to reorganize their business and focus. and break it up into two different parts one was uh, manufacturing and the other was uh, marketing uh, so we were very bullish in india uh, for the cleaning and uh, hygiene uh, opportunity and therefore we pounced on this opportunity uh, to uh, take over the shares of uh, buzil and uh, we find that there was a little bit of uh, you know uh, because of the corona uh, the uh, german partners were more conservative than we were in india and because of this uh, opportunity uh, uh, and uh, the willingness of the uh, german partner to exit uh, we thought that going alone would help us to accelerate uh, uh, because accelerate our uh, cleaning and hygiene business because the technology has already been transferred and we were getting the license for the next 10 years and once we get this license for the next 10 years i think uh, rosari on its own would be able to run faster than uh, in the joint venture uh, so how much have we paid for the 40% stake and uh, in terms of license fees uh, will it be something like a percentage of revenues or how are the controls on the entire thing yeah uh, total uh, what we paid for 40% of bujil rozari share is 4.59 crores in rupees and there is no license fee yeah, there is no, no recurring license fee Okay, so the license is valid for uh, ten years, and after that we are free to use, or uh, will it get transferred? No, no, no. There is no transfer. Oh, we are free okay. to use it after ten years. They are free to come into India if they want. Okay, okay. 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 Second question is on uh, any new product uh, launches that we did during this quarter, and what is the upcoming pipeline for uh, second half of the financial year? Thank you. Uh, our R&D lab continues to work on different formulations and different variants for you know uh, uh, home health and hygiene. Uh, so hand washes, you know, and uh, body and health care products, hair care products, uh, serums, essential oils. uh these are the sort of portfolios uh, which have been focused for this quarter okay and any uh, product launches uh, which are 
there in the pipeline for the next couple of quarters. Yeah, we have uh, for the textile businesses, we have, you know, the spin finishes which were lined up, the sizing products which were lined up. Uh, so these are uh, good areas for us in there. Uh, Animal and nutrition, we have some more, you know, feed additives, products and supplements uh, which we plan to launch in this, in this quarter. So, sure. and sir, just one last clarification. I missed uh, the net uh, cash number uh, at the end of September. Yeah, end of September net cash was 102 crores, sir. Okay, and uh, this is uh, including the payment of uh, uh, Bujil that we have made, about 4.6 crores. Yeah, it is after that, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Roji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Saurav Ginodia from Smith. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. So I would like to understand a little bit on the raw material side. What is our key raw, what are our key raw materials? And uh, uh, you can help us understand a little bit on the pricing scenario on the raw material side. Um, good evening, Mr. Kanodia. Uh, our key raw materials uh, fall into different families like surfactant, acrylic, silicones, and enzymes. Uh, these are the four, uh, you know, basic building blocks for our finished good products. Uh, the largest RM which we use, the raw material which we use, is acrylic acid. And uh, you know, we have uh, other products like acetic acid and uh, surfactants which we use uh, in our formulations. Okay, sir, and some understanding on the pricing trend? Uh, the pricing trend has uh, has been uh, generally stable, uh, you know, because there has been more oversupply uh, than demand uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, so, uh, but it has been stable. Uh, there is no linkage of our major raw materials with crude, you know, pricing. Uh, so, generally, it has been stable. Okay. And generally, what percentage of our raw material requirement is imported? Uh, less than 10% of our sales is, you know, equ equivalent is uh, in uh, is in imports. Okay. And once this entire capacity expansion uh, program is over, if you can uh, broadly help us understand what kind of a peak uh, turnover we can do on this. In in uh, peak turnover, uh, kis ke mein? Uh, once the total uh, capacity expansion happens, as per the presentation, you will be reaching about 2 lakh 52,000 metric tons. So, on that capacity, what kind of a turnover can we do? Uh, 1500 crores. 1500 crores. Oh. That was useful, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Kanadi. you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants if you wish to ask a question. Please press star, then one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Jason Soames from Monarch Network. Please go ahead. So thanks for the follow-up. Um, uh, in terms of textile uh, specialty chemicals, that's your segment. I mean, I can clearly see that, you know, HPPC has really grown over the last three years. Obviously, uh, you know, the COVID uh, factor has played its part. Just, uh, but, uh, you know, your textile special, uh, textile specialty and EHN has been more or less a little bit uh, flat growth over 2018 to 20. So just wanted to know, I mean, on that, those segments, what is your outlook and any growth uh, measures, you know, you would want to take on that? Uh, this quarter has been very heartening for TH textile specialty chemicals and animals and nutrition, uh, you know, businesses, uh, because we saw very good growth demand for our products. Uh, so going forward, uh, you know, all these three are going full guns. All the all the all the you know cylinders are firing full guns, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, or all the guns are firing full cylinders. All cylinders, and uh, we see good traction in all the three businesses. Okay. Okay, and so you also initially mentioned that uh, you mentioned that probably I mean you know textile centers just Tirpur, Ludhiana, etc. are seeing good healthy export demand, and that's auguring well for your TAC segment as well. Am I right? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments. Yeah, thank you, everybody. I hope uh, we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please free, please feel free to contact our team or CDR India. Thank you once again for the, taking the time to join us on this call. Thank you. On behalf of Rosary Biotech Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining. You may now disconnect your lines.